Today I'm going to be doing a transmission service on this 2019 Toyota Highlander. So here's a list of everything you're going to need to get started on this. I'm going to put all the information in the description. So check out the description, the tools I'm using, other than maybe the impacts over there. We won't worry about that, but the the torque wrench, the size of bits, the scanner. I've got two different scanners all linked down there. They're the same one, just uh, branded two different ways. Um, the fluid, everything, the pump, it'll all be in the description along with the torque specs and all of that stuff. This is for a 2017 through 2020 Toyota Highlander with the UA80E automatic transmission. And uh, now I'll, I'll head this off right off the bat here. I'm gonna show you the right way to fill it um, to the correct level. Now there's a lot of controversy on this. A lot of people, I get it, you don't wanna buy the scan tool to measure the transmission temperature, but this is the right way to do it. So you can do it any other way you want and that's on you. I'm gonna show you the right way to do it. It is supposed to be about 3.2 quarts. So that's what you need to know if you don't wanna do it the right way. But there again, this video isn't about that. This is about doing it the right way. So, and we're actually just gonna use the full four quarts because that way will for sure be good. And, and the reason I do it the right way is because I've got a lot of transmission service videos and there's a lot of comments from people that have found out that their transmission was underfilled even from the dealer. So by measuring what you take out, that is not going to get you to the correct level. That is simply going to get you back to the same level you were at, which may or may not be right. So I had to cover all that because this gets brought up a lot and there's a reason that this is the procedure and how you're supposed to do it. So going down the parts list here, we've got the hand pump. We've got a gallon of Valvoline Max Life ATF. On the back here, it tells you that it meets the Toyota Lexus WS standard. That's what you need to know. Feel free to use actual Toyota WS fluid. That is perfectly acceptable, but I'm running this Valvoline Max Life. I run it in everything that it meets the specs for. It's great fluid. I got no concerns with it. Uh, then we've got our scanner, link in the description but uh, that's gonna get us our trans temp and we need to hit between 95 and 113 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 35 to 45 degrees Celsius. Like I already said, the official capacity for this procedure is 3.2 quarts, but we're gonna use a whole gallon. Then I've got a 24 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter hex bit, a six millimeter hex bit. In this particular case, I've got a three eighths to half inch drive adapter just because I'm gonna be using three ace tools here with that 24 millimeter half inch drive socket. I've got a torque wrench and I've got a breaker, a ratcheting breaker bar there. So, uh, and then over here, we've got a 10 millimeter bit on this little impact and we've got a 21 millimeter socket on this big one because we're gonna to have to take the driver's side front tire off. So we're gonna get started on this thing. First thing I'm gonna do is get this wheel out of here. Next thing I'm gonna do is remove these two 10 millimeter bolts that hold this, this shield, we can flip this down just a little bit here. There is one more fastener, we don't need to mess with it because now we can already see our fill plug right there. Since you probably couldn't see it back there, it's that right there. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna crack that fill plug loose to make sure that we're not gonna have any issues Filling it up after we drain it. These usually take a pretty good crack to snap them loose. So I'm gonna kinda finagle my way under here. Give it a crack. We've broken it loose and now I can probably reach in there and do it by hand, but it is recessed a little bit. So we're just gonna use the breaker bar to finish unscrewing it. By the book, you're supposed to replace the crush washer every time. It's hit and miss for me. Uh, a lot of times lately, I've been reusing it because I've had just as many problems with reusing them as I have with putting new ones on. So link in the description for new ones, but we're gonna reuse this one. Moving under the vehicle here, there's the back of the vehicle, there's the front. Here is our drain plug. It's a 10 millimeter hex bit. So we've got a breaker bar on the 10 millimeter hex bit. Same thing with this, it's probably gonna take a good snap to break it loose, and it did. 
Then we're gonna back this out and we're gonna wanna get our drain pan under here right away because it's gonna start to drain, but this is one of two steps to drain all the fluid. So we'll get this out of here first. And as you can see, well, two things. Number one, the fluid looks great, which is what I expected. This vehicle has 35,000 miles on it. The owner just bought it. It's a 19, so it's a few years old here. It's about four years old, but uh, they bought it and they just wanna go through and make sure everything's fresh. So that's why we're doing this service, not because there were any issues or concerns, just very proactive. Next, we're gonna grab, and this is where it's gonna be a mess. We're gonna grab a six millimeter Allen and that's gonna go right up in here. There's a plastic tube in here that it fits into. Make sure you use the right bit here so you don't damage it. it these are not tight. As you can see, I did not need a tool. I mean, other than, you know, the bit. I didn't need a ratchet or anything like that. It should come right out. So we're gonna unscrew this and drop it down. Now we're gonna get the rest of the fluid, which is really most of the fluid. I will note that there's no magnet or anything like that on the drain plug, so uh, it's always good to wipe it off, but there's not any specific reason that you have to. We're almost done here. You don't even have to wipe any of this off because we're literally gonna put this right back in once the fluid is drained out. So uh, if it makes you feel good, you can wipe it off. Hey, look, we got a little bit dripping out of there, but there's really no reason that you even have to wipe it off. You're just gonna make a mess again, so uh, so yeah, so once this is kind of down to this point, we're just dribbling a little bit. So I feel like we've done a pretty good job of draining it. So we're just gonna insert the fill level tube back into the transmission and we're gonna hand tighten it. There again, no other tool needed, no ratchet or anything like that. Just gonna tighten it down until it bottoms out. And there you go. We can take our bit out of there and now we can put the transmission drain plug back in and snug it down. We don't need to torque it yet at this point. So we'll place it up in here. And we'll just give it just a little bit of a turn so that it doesn't leak or anything through the fill procedure. So moving back over to the fill plug location, of course, we've already got that out. I've got my pump. The inlet end is in the gallon of transmission fluid sitting on the floor. And the outlet end, we're gonna sneak right into the transmission here. It probably isn't gonna go in very far. It might fight us a little bit staying, but that's where it's gonna go. In fact, I think we'll try looping it around like that to see if that works out. We might dribble a little bit out. In fact, I'm gonna move the pan underneath it just in case. And now I'm gonna pump the entire gallon of fluid in, which I'm not going to make you watch. Okay, I've got the whole gallon pumped in, minus probably an ounce or two that dribbled out. It's just, I couldn't get the hose in far, which is a typical problem. So there's a little bit that dribbled out, but there again, that's a good reason why you put the whole gallon in and then you're for sure good to go. So now that we've got the gallon in, we're gonna take the fill hose out, we'll grab the fill plug, and we'll sneak that back in here. 36 foot pounds is our torque spec, and I did actually grab an extension that I hadn't mentioned earlier. That's gonna make this very easy to do. And there we go. We can now swing our little cover back up. The next thing to do is get the transmission up to operating temperature. So I'm gonna hop in and start it up and let it start to warm up because this vehicle is not warm right now. And while that's warming up, I'll put the wheel back on because we're done on the fill plug side of things. So I've got the vehicle running, I've plugged into the diagnostic scanner, and I also shifted through the gears while I was up there starting it up. That's critical to do that before you set the level. So that's out of the way. So now we're gonna go in here. It hasn't been running long, so I'd expect not a very high transmission temp, but we're gonna check before we put the wheel on or spend time doing anything else here. So on this scanner, I'm gonna hit the menu button. I'm gonna scroll down to service check and hit enter. 2019 Toyota Highlander, yes, that's our vehicle. And there we go, transmission fluid temperature. 86 degrees, so we need to warm up a little bit, but 95 is the beginning threshold where we can set the level. So we're gonna set this aside and get the wheel installed.
we've hit 97 degrees. So we're in the range. There we go, 98. It's gonna keep going up. So we're gonna, gonna go under there quick and we're gonna pull out the drain plug and let the excess drain. So we'll need to crack it loose since we did tighten it with the wrench, but not very tight. Then we're gonna unscrew it. And everything that comes out is excess because it's only gonna drain down to that fill level tube. Okay, we're down to a dribble. And just to reiterate, I have put a full gallon in. I have run it up to operating temperature. I've shifted through the gears and it is now in park idling in between the temperature range. And I've let basically all the excess drain out just down to a dribble. And now we're gonna reinstall the drain plug and we're gonna torque it down to 36 foot pounds with a 10 millimeter Allen. All right, we've got everything wrapped up on this 2019 Toyota Highlander until it's ready for the next transmission service.